I want to do a quick word about um, how to contact us after hours. So on the bottom of our consent forms or our post, I'm sorry, not our consent forms, our post-treatment instructions for the procedures, it will tell you what to watch out for. So look at that material so that you know it's pretty um, procedure specific about what you're looking out for, but usually it's a fever uh, over 100.5, um, sudden redness, um, drainage uh, that's thick, like uh, like the consistency of lotion, not like thin, like that's coming into your drain tube, but like thick, if it smells. Um, if you have any questions, you know, about that stuff, you just call our regular office number, and if it's after hours, the answering service will pick up, then you just tell them that it's urgent. Urgent is the code word for pass you through to the office. And you usually get me, unless I'm on you know vacation or out of the office, you may get somebody else. But most of the time, evenings or weekends, most of the time you get me. And um, so I get a call or I get a text that says, you know, I've got an urgent call coming in. If I'm somewhere really noisy, I may not answer it. I may, you know, wait until I step out to where it's quiet, but anyway, when you call urgent, you will get everybody, it notifies everybody in the office. We all see it because we have an app on our phone. And so sometimes if they can, if my other nurse can see that I haven't responded to it, then she'll text me, hey, did you see the call from, did you see a call about this? So everybody can see these so that we can make sure that somebody um, followed up with you. If you don't get a call back uh, within like 30 minutes to an hour, then try to call us again because it may just be, I may not have service. I may have missed it. Somebody else may can, will see it then and know to call you back. But usually most of the time, I'm, I'm usually available. <laughs> so, um, so I get those, I can see those. Uh, leave me a detailed message if not so the more information we have the better but tell them it's urgent if they ask you if it's urgent and you say no then they're going to put you in a general box that we won't see until like Monday until the next business day if you say that it's urgent you go into a different queue to where it notifies everybody versus the next business day message um, so that's, that's that. Um, if you have questions about scheduling, uh, your follow-ups and stuff like that, I don't, if I'm answering your phone and I'm at Target and you have a surgery question about drainage and what to do about your, um, you know, do you need to go to the emergency room? What's going on? You know, you have fever, you got this or that. Um, I can handle those questions. I can handle those questions anywhere, even if I'm at Target. What I can't handle is, hey, can I move my appointment from Monday to Wednesday? I, I don't know, because I don't have that. I don't have that there. But you know, your general questions, I can help you with all you know all the time. Um, the other thing that I will say is just overall, what we want to prevent having any type of emergency after surgery is the best thing you can do is get up and walk. So to prevent blood clots, you get up and walk. Walk to the bathroom, take your catheter out. If you have a catheter, take it out the next day so that you can get up and, and walk. If you're not getting out of bed, you at least need to stand up, you know, every so often to get your, you know, your blood going. We don't want blood clots. Um, the other thing is, you know, you can have this kind of pneumonia from not taking in deep enough breaths. We see this a lot after um, implant and lifts up top surgeries because there's you're just heavy, it hurts, you're not wanting to take your shallow breathing. And the first thing that we, usually one of the first signs that we know that's happening is the patient will call and they're running a little bit of fever after those types of surgeries. Um, I've done that myself. And Dr. Crashman told me, he's like, go walk to the mailbox. And sure enough, it helped. So what we wanna do is the first sign of you not taking deep breaths usually is that you'll start to run a little bit of fever. So if you start to feel that, patients call thinking, 
I must have an infection if I'm running fever. But realistically, if you had your surgery that day, the chance of your body having the time to build up that much bacteria enough to cause you those kind of things, you know, those kind of issues, it's just not very likely. That's not our first thought because number one, we gave you antibiotics. You're still taking antibiotics. Um, and it hasn't had enough time to fester enough to cause you a buildup of bacteria to cause you a problem. So if you are having those little types of fevers a day or two right after your surgery, that should be your first sign that you need to get up and walk. Um, walk, you know, to the bathroom, walk to the, if you can, if it's, you know, surgery up here, walk to the mailbox. If you really just cannot get up and walk, um, we have our, um, the little breathing, you know, uh, the incentive spirometers for you that you can use, or you can literally just get a latex party balloon from Walmart and, you know, just try and blow that up a couple, you know, blow, try and blow that up, you know, every, you know, once an hour or something like that. And that'll help you open your chest up enough that you, that you're breathing and things like that. So those are just some, some tricks. Um, the walking though, you know, it's really just going to solve a lot of those issues for you. But if you do have questions after hours, call us through the answering service. Please don't email, please don't text anybody. Um, we don't follow, those aren't, those systems aren't set up to, to keep trying to get a hold of us. So if we miss it, we miss it. If you emailed Kelsey, I'm, I'm not going to know. I'm not going to get it. Kelsey's off on the weekend. I'm, I'm not going to know. You're going to be sitting in Kelsey's inbox until Monday. So if you need me, call so that the answering service can transfer you to me. Don't sit in somebody's inbox. So, um, you know, we want you to be able to get the, the prompt assistance. Okay, so that's just a little bit about how to get a hold of us after hours.